As we deal with a subject today, the theme is memorials. And our subject will be the importance of remembering. The Lord had put this in my spirit because lately he's been teaching me a lot about honoring. It is so important that we learn how to honor, to give honor. The Bible says give it where it's due. That doesn't mean that you generically respect. Now, in the natural, regardless if you agree with an individual, if you're in a circumstance, the courtroom, or if an official walk in and it's customary to stand when they say, all rise, right, just because you stood, that's not so much giving the honor. You are showing decency and order more than anything. Honor goes deeper than that. Because that's sometimes we stand for individuals and we, we're not in agreement with them and what they stand for. So out of decency and order, you need to stand when they say all rise. Because if you don't, the bailiff will take you out. I'm not in here. But God's version of giving honor, where honor is due, is deeper than a superficial standing. You literally have to have admiration for who you respect. There has to be something in you that's connecting and giving the, the, the respect that's deserved. So when he says, give honor to whom honor is due, he says who is that person that's, that deserves that honor. So you, you're not supposed to give honor where it's not due, where it's not deserved. If you ever be with me in some services, and if they ever ask me to come up, and most of the time you say, I give honor to the pastor, and I give honor to this, and I give honor to that, and I have my way around that. And I just tell everybody, I give honor to everybody, and God bless you, Pastor. Y'all not in there with me. Y'all preaching, listen to what I'm telling you right now. And somebody just was in the paper the day before. Something off the wall. Well, I can't give on. Y'all not in here with me. Because you have to give on where it's due. Where it's deserved. So I want you to understand what I'm telling you this morning because we're going to talk about the memorial. We're going to talk about Putting things in remembrance. Mm -hmm. I'm, like, I'm, I'm going to give you three examples in the scriptures. Even Jesus himself wanted to be remembered. Right. As we look at St. Luke 22 and 14, as we pick up the story at what we call the, Lord, the Last Supper, yeah. listen to what Luke 22, 14 and 15 says. And when the hour was come, he sat down and the twelve disciples with him. And he said unto them, with desire, I have desired to eat this Passover with thee before I suffer. Jesus says, with desire, I have desired. Okay. What is that phrase? He's saying that I have been craving. It's just like when you're hungry and you're thirsty. Like this lady said she was hungry, brother Larry. We can't understand somebody just had a car wreck. And wanted to get some sustenance in her. But if you're hungry enough, Amen. laying on the animal's gurney, needing something to eat, was eating the hamburger. <laughs> so she must have really been hungry. Amen. Jesus says, now, this hunger and thirst that I have, it has nothing to do. Because the, the Lord's Supper is not fulfilling your belly. But he said, I desire with a desire to eat this with you. Yeah. It was the company that he was in, and, and the word tells us, now we have, we have to look, but the word tells us, and he says unto them, with desire, I have desire right. to eat, somebody said, this Passover. Yeah. Now the reason he said this Passover, because that's his last one. Wow. So it's special. Yeah. He knows this is the last time we'll be able to fellowship. This will be one of the last time I'll be able to give some instruction. This is important to me. So you need to understand the setting for this supper. Oh, I wish 
I, I wish I did. I'm not taxing this morning. Y'all excuse me. But we don't have to get focused upon who's leading us yeah. and not what's going on around us. Yeah. Because Jesus said this Passover is special to him. Yeah. We don't have to make special what's special to the persons or people we are following. Right. Okay, if it's not special to you, then you're following the wrong person. Right. So Jesus said, this I desire. We desire. So get your light bulbs and come on. This is important to Jesus. Now watch what happens because this is very important because Jesus goes on further. We didn't write it down here, but it's in between the 16th to that 23rd verse. Jesus said, and at this supper that I desire to eat with you, there's one whose hand is going to betray me. He's at my table. Yeah, but I was looking so forward yeah, to eat this mess over with you. Yeah, I'm not concerned about who's at the table that's not with me. Yeah. You're going to have to get focused and stop worrying about who's not with you. Yeah. And you've got to be focused about your desires because God's going to give you the desires of your heart. Y'all not in there with me. So he's trying to impart to them, you need to get on the same page with me because I have with desire desired this. I've been craving this. Desire means I need to do this. And there's much love involved. Well, let's pick it up now. This is after Jesus said the betrayer is at the table with me. St. Luke 22 and 23, what does it say? And they began to inquire among themselves mm -hmm. which of them it was that should do this. Now, 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 watch this. They are sitting at, sitting at a table. Jesus and his 12, that's 13 people. He, he made a point that this is special to me. Right. I've been looking forward to this before I suffer. I'm getting ready to suffer, he's saying. Yeah, and I'm going to have this last meal with you. Yeah, because yeah. He, in, in essence, it's just like a man on death row having his last request for his meal. Y'all yeah. in there with me? Yeah. And he's with his 12 closest uh, associates in ministry. Yeah, yeah. And the Bible said they begin to ask one another, they inquire among one another, is it you? Yeah. I see, if you just glance over that, you miss the point. The point is, if I'm sitting at a table with you and you think I'm the one that's going to betray somebody, you think I'm the one getting ready to do some dirt? <laughs> they start asking, is it you? Are you the one? Why, why would you ask somebody something like that? So now what happened is, when you ask me something crazy like that, now I'm looking at you crazy. Y'all not in here, are you? Because you see in the next verse, what the word says, St. Luke 22 and 24. And there was also a strife among them. Yeah, because there was already some underlying problems in Jesus' ministry. I know y'all think y'all, if y'all had a church, it'd be the perfect church. Jesus' church was jacked up. Y'all not in there with me? His last supper with them. The last meal, the mess going on at the table. One another accusing her, is you? You know? See, for you to even ask, is it you? That means you think it's me. Because if I didn't think it was you, I would even ask you. This table messed up. Y'all not in here, man. I'm in here by myself, bro. This last supper is turning into, it may turn into a fluke fight. That's the whole thing. But the Bible says that was also a strife. What's a strife? A strife deal with conflicts and friction. It was already friction among them. Twelve. But guess what happened? It was two that set this down up. No, I'm, I'm giving you. Y'all give me a few minutes. I'll give you a few minutes. When Jesus said, "I desire to eat this meal," He said, He told two disciples. He said, "You're going to see a man that's going to be carrying a pitcher." He said, "Now, when you see him, just follow." Him. Yes, sir. He didn't tell them the man's name. He didn't tell them where they were going. So when you see somebody, a man carrying a pitcher, yeah. carrying some water, right. he said, just follow him. Now let me tell you why that's important. Because <laughs> in that day, with male chauvinists, only the women carried the water. All right. You remember the story of the woman at the well? Yeah. It was the women that, got, uh, that would go get the water. Yeah. If you see a man carrying the water, in that day, Somebody would say he hit me. Y'all not in here with me. Now I hope next week I'll talk to Brother Solomon, excuse me for the personal reference, 
And he brought up the fact, he said, that he's going to get with the hospitality for some men to help with the sermon next week. Is that right? That's not women's work. So when you see that man carrying the water, you need to find somebody to follow folk that carry the water. Amen. And he led them to a room. The Bible said upper room. And that's where they were having this supper. Right. Now, the Bible says the strife, which is again, that's friction and that's trouble. Right. It, it, it gives the idea that they were arguing. And also the, the original definition says squabble. What's a squabble? Everybody here, they were squabble. <laughs> yeah, yeah. You're not really raising your voice. You're talking all intelligent, but you fussing hard. Your eyes are not looking. You're not looking like you're on drugs. You're squabbling. But behind you, thank you, brother. Behind your words, it's the same effect. Y'all hear me? Because that squabbling means that. You have words. Having words, and also it can go to the extreme, and even with squabbling, you can have a falling out. Yeah. So this one was happening at the last supper. Yeah. This important supper yeah. of the Lord's. Yeah. That he had desire. With desire, he had desire to have this supper. Yeah. And mess at the table. Mm -hmm. Now, I'm going to jump to what Paul says, because Paul is saying what happened what the, the, the Lord's word during this time. In 1 Corinthians uh, 11 and 23, these are the words of Paul uh, relaying what happened during this supper. Read what it says in the 23rd verse. For I have received of the Lord that which also I delivered unto you, mm -hmm. that the Lord Jesus, the same night in which he was betrayed, took bread. Yeah, that same night, Jesus knowing that the betrayer was at the table, the yeah. same night that he took the bread and broke the bread, uh, the, Paul is saying, this is what happened. Yeah. And in the 24th verse, it says what? And when he had given thanks, mm -hmm. he broke him and said, mm -hmm. Take, eat. This is my body, which is broken for you. This do in remembrance of me. This was so important to Jesus. This is the only time I know in Scripture. He said, to remember him. Remember what my body is going to, what's going to happen to my body. It's going to be broken for you. That's what ministry is about. Ministry is not about squabbling. Yes, ministry is about the broken body of Christ. Yes, 